All right, good morning, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Prasad Ramakrishnan, and I'm the CIO and CISO of Freshworks. And today I'm going to be spending a few minutes talking to you about metrics that matter. We live in a world where we see metrics, metrics everywhere. It's almost similar to the expression that we have heard, which is water, water everywhere, but no water to drink. Um, however, are we looking at metrics the right way? Are we looking at the right set of metrics to enable us to um, control the way our business operates? Um, people have metrics which they have for the sake of vanity and other reasons. So what I'm going to talk about is the four broad symptoms which you see of bad types of metrics. And I'm going to talk to you about um, five or six techniques that you can use to get your metrics uh, to a better place. But before that, let me talk about a model that we use and different companies use different models for determining where they are from a overall metrics maturity model perspective. And this model was proposed by uh, Jim Cates, who is a thought leader, and he called this uh, model climbing the ladder of business intelligence. And the way the, the model works is it's a six stage model where you initially start off with a set of facts, um, which is where you run your um, business pretty much out of Excel spreadsheets. And then um, you bring these into a system of record and call it as a data layer where you may have an ERP system or a, CR, uh, or a CRM system. And then you start putting a data warehouse together, which is at the information stage where you bring all these into, a, into an enterprise data warehouse or multiple data mods, which enables you to now start um, uh, analyzing a bit of the data. The next stage of evolution is where you look at what was done previously to help you predict as to what's going on in the future, where you start now getting insights from your data. This is where the, the underlying data starts talking to you. Once you have attained this stage, you can start getting into the stage of what is called understanding, which is where, how do you take the data to now do formal business modeling? How many people do I need to hire in a particular function? Which marketing campaigns do I need to um, start investing in? Which, is, which are the campaigns that are giving me the good, um, uh, good ROI on investment? And the last stage is what we call as enabled intuition, where the, instead of a human getting in, the system actually helps determine some of these things. And this is where techniques like RPA and um, uh, AIML come in, where it gives you on a real-time basis what your conversion metrics are and what your performance metrics are and helps you tune the business automatically. Most companies in reality are between stage two and stage three. While most companies will have an ERP system, a CRP, CRM system, in terms of the implementation of the data warehouse, most companies struggle to get to the knowledge, understanding, or um, enabled intuition level. They are more in the level two, level three level. Let's now talk about the type of metrics that drive mediocrity. One is what we refer to as vanity metrics. Right? These are metrics that make you feel good, where you can go and uh, uh, pound your um, chest and say, hey, I, I achieved these numbers. But these are not actionable. Just going out and saying that, hey, I made, um, I made 20 million of revenue for the company last quarter doesn't really tell you as to what you're going to do uh, moving forward. So these are what are called as lagging indicators. And may, most people have these vanity metrics just to make themselves look good, but these are not actionable. The second type of metrics is what we call the stretch goal paradox. This is where top management comes up with a goal, which is, is more like a stretch goal. And an example of this could be where Marissa Meyer, when she took over Yahoo, she said that she wants every single business unit to grow by 10% or more. Or Walmart, when they said that they want 100% of all of their energy coming from renewable sources. These, while they motivate the employee, they kind of encourage and foster unethical behavior. In some cases, in the, in the case of Yahoo, they met the goal, but it ended up where the company completely failed and then eventually got um, acquired by Verizon. And Yahoo was one of the, 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 the prime um, brands that we were all uh, relating to in the early, uh, early 2000s and the late 90s. The third and fourth type of uh, metrics that drive mediocrity are one is what we call as metric maniacs. And this is the syndrome of what we call excessive metrics, right? Where some people love to see around 100 different metrics that arrive at their inbox first thing Monday morning or first thing Tuesday morning without paying attention to what are truly the metrics that I need to uh, drive my behavior or drive the behavior of my call center. An example is in the call center, if you're not tracking the, the percentage of accurate answers and if you're now only tracking Am I responding to the, um, uh, to the number of rings? Am I answering it within the first three rings? And how many calls did I answer per hour? You may still have a syndrome where you're meeting all of those metrics, but um, you're not uh, looking at the right metric. And the other last problem here is the uh, syndrome of uh, someone else's metrics. You meet a person at a conference, you meet a person on the plane, 
and they talk to you about a metric that they have used to drive their business and then without figuring out whether it really applies to your business you end up using somebody else's metrics and in in, in all these cases your goals will be achieved but the end customer is uh, dissatisfied and you would have he heard the statement saying the operation is successful but the patient is dead so let's talk about the few techniques that you can use to get to a better place right one is always always explicitly link your metric to a goal right where if you if if um, um, and this is where um, the the management thought where people's behavior changes based on what they are measured on comes into play right so always tie it back to a, a goal make it easy for people to tie it, uh, uh, tie back their activities to the metric and see how it um, um, gets back into the bigger picture right so from a from a top down perspective the management level goals and the management level metrics will be different from the next uh, level down will be different to the next level down and so on so make it where you identify the two or three things at the operational level which ties back to the overall goal if a person knows that by understanding a customer's issue and solving the customer's issue properly i'm actually improving customer satisfaction the broader company goal would be possibly to improve csat by x number of percentage and so on and enable an open dialogue on the metric on the goal because if the goal is not relevant you need to constantly challenge the relevance and make sure that you are willing to change the goal when the goal stops making relevance the second technique is starting to track trends uh, over absolute numbers this goes back to the first thing where i was talking about the um, the vanity metrics right where if you're just looking at saying hey i did 20 million dollars in revenue or 10 million dollars in revenue last quarter um, that by itself as an absolute number doesn't mean anything how does this compare to the trends that were there pr the previous year uh, what does it compare to um, uh, uh, trends from a previous quarter so take for example what happened to the covid situation almost every business has metrics that they look at look at to, to predict what the, the revenue for the upcoming period is but then the whole covid situation rendered all those assumptions wrong where um, businesses were afraid to spend money they were trying to conserve cash right so this is where by tracking trends over time what you will be able to do is look at a trend of something that happened in a previous bcp situation or something simulated like a bcp situation and see what it did to your metrics right the reason being businesses change changes over time the the, the complete business environment changed with uh, with covid right so you need to always look at what was it at a, uh, at, a um, um, at a previous cycle and look at what did you do to respond and what metrics did you track um, over time in the previous situation to determine what type of metrics do you want to track now this will enable you to tune your business accordingly the third is use shorter tracking periods some people talk about projects which go 12 months 15 months 18 months in duration the reality is that businesses change so fast thank um, the great example here is the covid situation if you track not just your business process and business process reengineering but also your metrics in shorter periods of time you actually will have the ability to make the fine tune adjustments that you need to make to replan your business and change course if you see that a particular trend where um, as an example during covid most people could not do field events there were no marketing events that were happening we started getting into more of web related events so maybe you need to now re uh, redirect part of the funding that you give to uh, field events and make it to more um, web events and then among the web events which are the events that gave you the maximum roi right so this is where um, using short periods of time in which you start looking at what the effectiveness of your business processes and the associated metrics allows you to do that and always tie your metrics back to a business process because uh, remember one thing metrics are not um, existing in an island and here's where get away from the syndrome of looking at the windshield um I, I get, get, looking at the rear view mirror and start looking forward right but just looking at the past metrics that's no indication of how your business is going to do in the future so always you need to look at metrics which will enable you to measure how you're doing in the future rather than as to how you did in the past the next technique is when a metric starts um, when a metric stops driving change change your metric some people get so wedded and so uh, embedded in the metrics that they don't want to let go right and that's the worst thing that you can do to yourself because the timeliness of your metric the quality of the metrics this changes over time and you need to make sure that you're not wedded to a particular metric very very similar to if you're wed, uh, to, to stock investing never get wedded to a stock if your objective is to make money in the stock market you never want to get a, a wedded to a particular stock you want to look at is it meeting the investment goals that you have 
Um, and if it doesn't, sell that stock and buy some other stock. Because it, uh, um, uh, some people st tend to start loving the company that they have invested in and then forget that they're actually hurting themselves more. And the last technique here is make your metrics, uh, metrics visible. Take, for example, what happens in the football field. Everybody knows in the team that they want to reach the touchdown line. You have individual statistics that, um, um, that apply to the quarterback, to the running back, and so on. But those are more incidental metrics. What is more important is the overall goal of reaching the, 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 the finish line. So if you rally everybody behind the, the objective of going to the uh, touchdown line, uh, to, the, to the goal line, then the entire team is marching towards that because everybody likes to be on a winning team. And th that's what motivates. And they don't, they don't go after personal glory. They go after overall um, uh, goals here. So these are some of the techniques that you can use to move towards the model, which I call as metrics that matter model. Thank you so much for um, attending this session. Please visit the Freshworks booth and have a wonderful day. And please remain safe. The, the pandemic is, um, is, is still, um, still there with us. So please remain safe. Thank you.